Omar Ahmed IFL TV MTK Global. We're in Norwood. We're at Barber Shop. Do you want to plug it? What? Hair Club. Hair Club. Norwood, yeah. Norwood High Street Hair Club. And Mike is the guy. Everyone knows Mike. He's the main guy. Yeah. Joined by the knowledge Spencer Ferron. Um, how is everything? I'm blessed, man. Everything's really, really good. Um, even better for seeing you, Omar. You know what I mean? So, yeah. We're just doing our thing. Seems like in boxing there's a, a new talking point every day. Of course, uh, today uh, Anthony Joshua's comments uh, were publicised uh, about Lennox Lewis, calling him a clown and that he has no respect for him. <laughs> what were your thoughts when you saw that? You know what? There's, on, on certain things, and I love Anthony Joshua, but there's certain things I just wish that certain people didn't say. Um, uh, was it Michelle Obama said, like, when they go low, we go high? So even over the years, if he believes that um, Lennox has said the obviously things about him or anything else, he should have he should have been this um, uh, this stay hungry, stay humble person. When it came to that, he should have he shouldn't have said that Lennox Lewis is a clown. Uh, I want to. This is the thing about this: Lennox is a clown. Uh, if we go back three years ago. In 2016, June the 3rd, the greatest of all times, and uh, Muhammad Ali passed away. And Lennox Lewis was a pallbearer, carried his body, carried the, the coffin. You had Sugar Ray Leonard, Will Smith, and Lennox Lewis, who were part of the free men who were the pallbearers. You can't turn around and say, Lennox Lewis, you really think that the, the family of Muhammad Ali would allow the clown as Anthony Joshua put it, to carry Muhammad Ali's coffin. Come on, man. And, that's, and, I, and there is no more iconic figure, black or white, than, than Muhammad Ali, of what he stood for, what he represented. None. I don't care if you go through history. Ali's got to be top three iconic figures ever. If you're dealing with sporting icons, Ali's number one. So, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You got to fix up, you got to fix up with that one. Um, and the things I'm saying is that I have a position of love because I actually love Andy Joshua and you know that I love, love the guy but to come out and call Lennox Lewis a clown we're living in a generation right now or a culture I could say we're living in a culture to be uncultured because if we knew about our culture right we wouldn't come out with statements that are so vehemently disrespectful and that's a disrespectful comment but because we're, we're around people who, who, who like to fling out the disrespect and that is and that's wrong. Seriously, that is, that is really, really wrong. That, it's like, boy, I don't know. People suggest that uh, Lennox has got an agenda against Joshua because he works for PBC. Um, what's the actual whole story with Lennox and Joshua? Can you break it down? Yeah, I'll tell you the whole story. Um, 2012, a week ago, it was a week, it was last week, on the, uh, Anthony Joshua won the Olympic gold medal at super middleweight. Not super middleweight, <laughs> super heavyweight. <laughs> Super heavyweight, right? At, su at super heavyweight, right? After you know, on the count back for for the Carmarelli fight, and Lennox Lewis reached out to him. Him and his cousin, well, he's, he's, who he calls uncle, but I think it's his cousin. Shay, they went out to Jamaica and they spent time with Lennox Lewis, right? Um, don't get it twisted. Andy Josh has done the right thing by going with um, by going with Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. He did. He's made an immense fortune and everything else. No one can knock that. And Eddie Hearn's done excellently well with, with, with Andy Joshua when it comes to that. But I think whereas Andy Joshua stayed around Lennox Lewis, stayed around his family and everybody else, his wife, his beautiful children, Lennox must have been under the notion that, right, Andy Joshua was going to come with him. Now, I'm not knocking um, Lennox Lewis for having for having, you know, the aspirations to say he's going to work with him. But I think he should have worked with Andy Joshua in some form of capacity. Right? He's not a, a promoter. He's not. So I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? I mean that's no disrespect to Lennox Lewis. I'm saying let those guys who have got the inroads to go do that, go do that. But what happened was when Andy Joshua came up to the UK, then they lost contact. Right? Now I'm saying this is Lennox Lewis. Right? You, lose, you lost contact with him. Now as he lost contact with Lennox Lewis, um, Lennox Lewis must have felt aggrieved by it. Right, figure right, man's kind of dissed me. But the thing was, was it April 17th, um, 2017, right? When he fights Klitschko, Klitschko right? Um, when they fought, Lennox Lewis came to go to the change room to like to Yashim to say, like, you know what I mean, well done. 
and he was stopped in going to the into the change room. Well, no, Nick Slow was yeah, stopped. Yeah, Nick was stopped. Now, ask anyone. What do you think? That's a disrespect. What do you think is this? Is it? You think it's a disrespect? Yeah, right? Definitely. Right? You think it's a disrespect? Yeah. So you think you're right. So then, off of that, when he's thinking, "Raw, well, man, this me like this," and then in his head, he could be like, "Raw, well, bunt Anthony Joshua." You know what I mean? Straight. That's what we be thinking. So, and from then, there's just been a rift. And then he works with PBC now, and then Lewis, Lewis speaks his mind. He's a great opinion. But it's only an opinion. But it's an opinion of a man that is arguably top five heavyweight of all time. So it's an opinion. So off of the back of that, you know what I mean? It's, it's a riff. And I've said, and I sat down with KD, and KD's Annie Joshua's guy. Like, these two need to done this argument and this beef. Because you also got to think about the, the generation um, below us. Like, young kids are going to think it's going to be, it's going to be okay. There we go, the burning smell. Right? The young kids are gonna be thinking today, Michael's the devil, you know. I know this man that like, you know it's you know how it goes. You know, you know, you know, you know how it goes. It's it's Nigerians, you know, they don't like Jamaican people, I swear down, right? And because I'm light skinned, they Stop wish they had my skin. My brother. Cause, right, because they got my skin cold, you know what I mean? But no, because of because of <laughs> because of all of these things, that's why they've had their rift. I, and I sat down with KD, I said, KD, come man. And KD said the same thing, yeah, man, them two got done their argument. Now, recently, on Bells and Whistles podcast, I was on it, I was a guest on it, and by chance, Lennox Lewis phoned me, and he was on the show, and Lennox Lewis said, like, yeah, I said, if Anthony was to reach out to you, would you help Anthony Joshua? And he said, of course I'd help him. So I don't believe there's no agenda. And Lennox Lewis has tweeted, I don't know what he tweeted recently, but he tweeted out today saying, like, listen, I'm not playing this game because I ain't got nothing against you. So because of that, I'm saying these men should come together, and they should sit down and reason, and, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, I just don't want it to be a fashion where we believe that we can disrespect the elders. You know what I mean? And that's and that's what and that's the only thing. And we should we should show respect. But then also, in Anthony Joshua's defence, you know what I mean, respect is earned and not bestowed. But I'm saying I think that Lennox Lewis, just by being Lennox Lewis and his accomplishments and everything else, that he has he is more than earned the right to, to have your respect. But personally, I'm saying when you leave in riffs in there, check this one out. Lennox Lewis said you can't go to university with your high school teacher. And that could have been a pop at Robert McCracken because he's the guy around him, right? Now, AJ's low to Robert McCracken and rightly so. But Lennox Lewis does have a point here. When he's saying like, Robert, maybe you're not ready for certain and certain things. I'm not agreeing with it, per se, but I just hope that they could, um, you know what I mean, they could sort out something because as far as I'm concerned, them things are embarrassing. You know what I mean? And, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Them things, are, them things are, they are embarrassing. To me, I'll take the things as embarrassment. So he was willing to help him for the rematch against Ruiz? Yeah, he, was, that's, he came and said, listen, I will help him. I will sit down. And then this morning, I get a phone call to, to Lennox. He said, rah, it seems like my olive branch has been burnt now. So, you know what I mean? I'm saying, no, I don't. I mean, I hope not. I hope not. I hope that it's... Uh, I hope that these guys can sort out their differences. To be honest, yeah, Lennox Lewis was the yeah the last guy uh, who who revenged two avenged two defeats, didn't he? Uh, yep. In the heavyweight division, yeah, the, the yo, last yo, guy to yo, do it. So, yo, Lennox, yeah, yeah. what are you saying, man? I can't see you, bro. Yeah, I'm in a barber shop. Yeah, it's the same. I've got you now. It's the same poor connection. I've got you now. Right, listen. I'm saying this, do you think that Muhammad Ali's family would have allowed a clown to be a pool bearer? Yeah. Well, exactly, they would never have done that. Right, is, of, course I, of, of course I know the answer. So, like, how do you feel that Andy Joshua has called you a clown? Oh, it's gone. He's disturbed right now. And I, I'm, not, I'm not taking it anywhere because these, these things are, are set out of stress. So right now, you shouldn't really worry about... Fuck. So you believe it's out of stress? I accept, yeah, I, 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 I accept the part ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, when, yeah. I accept his apology. Ahead of time. Are you are you accept his apology ahead of time? All right then, big up, yeah. All right, love. 
to just break down what Lennox actually just said there. He, he was saying like, um, he's, the reason, yeah, the reason why that could have come out of his mouth. And like, he was saying like, right, he said, listen, I accept his apology ahead of time. That's the man, that's a man. That's, that's how big man handle things. But I'm gonna say this again, because like, to, to like the young kids who are gonna be watching this, Lennox Lewis was Muhammad Ali's pool bearer. That is it. You know why he was his pool bearer? Because when, um, when they opened up the Muhammad Ali Center, I think that was in 2000 or 2001, um, Lennox Lewis donated $350,000 towards it, right? And it, um, what's it, um, Jeff Powell, um, the sports writer, oh, yeah. Jeff Powell um, said, I went to Lennox Lewis and I asked Lennox, um, why did you do that? And he went, well, it's Muhammad Ali, isn't it? Simple. Right, and the, the beneficiaries of Muhammad Ali's family said, we want you to be the pool bearer for the, for the come on, it's done. That's, that's what I'm saying, like, come on. So we, got, we got to get out of this thing. And I keep on telling you on this thing, on this energy thing, like, whatever comes out of your mouth will come looking for you. Now, I'm going to tell anyone, please, I'm begging you, try and do the rice experiment. Get three pockets of rice, a handful of rice, put it in a, in a glass container, and pour water on it, and for 30 days, write, have three different containers, and write on the containers, I love you, I hate you, and be impartial to the last one. Trust me, I've tried it, right? The one that I say that I hate you to starts to mold and go black. The one that I say I love you to starts to lament and lets off a sweet smell. The one that you leave impartial starts to decay anyway. So what's it trying to teach you? This is science, this is law teaching you that when you're impartial on a certain thing and you haven't got a, a, a definitive answer to certain things, we'll start going black. We will start to decay anyway. But not as a faster rate as something when it's your intentions. Everything is carbon based. Go and try the rice experiment. When you realize that, people will start to guard what comes out their mouth. Whether it's good or bad, guard what comes out your mouth because whatever comes out your mouth will come looking for you. I'm telling you this now. So spread love in, in everything. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm praying. And I'm shouting out to my boy KD, we have to get these two to sit down and shake hands because it should be ended. This should be end and, and should have an ending part or a conclusion and ending part in love and kisses because I'm being real. They shouldn't be fighting at each other. That's this, and, and publicly, and, if, and fair play to, to Lennox Lewis. He hasn't gone low. He could have gone low now and said, right, I'm buying Anthony Joshua. He ain't done that. So you know what I mean? He could have done that. Okay, okay. Uh, should we finish the rest of this yeah. interview elsewhere? Yeah, yeah. Pick it back up, all right? All right, mate.